Today we're going to be taking a look at ESRI shapefile support with RADMAP. As a reminder, RADMAP is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and RAD controls for WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we're going to see how you implement a RADMAP, and then we'll follow up by loading a shapefile in. So we actually have some shape data loaded into our map using the ESRI shapefile standard format. And finally, we're going to take a look at implementing shape fills. This is going to enable us to set a default fill for the shapes that are being loaded, as well as a highlight fill, so you have a little bit more of an interactive effect when you're working with RATMAP. Stepping into Visual Studio, I utilize the Telerik Visual Studio extensions, so I already have the assemblies that I need, Telerik Windows controls, to the visualization, as well as data in my project. And I also went ahead and added a data sources directory to the web project, and added a New Jersey shapefile and New Jersey data file. So we're all set with everything we need to start utilizing RADMAP, and load in some ESRI shapefiles. So of course, first step, we're utilizing the Telerik namespace, and we add a rad map to our page, give it a name, X rad map. Close that up, and we'll see the designer will pop in with that all too familiar gray, letting us know that we do have a rad map going here. Now the next thing we'll need is a provider. Since we know we're loading data from a file, we can actually not use the Bing or OpenStreetMap providers, and go ahead and add a Telerik empty provider. Now in addition to a provider, since we're loading data, we're going to need an information layer that we'll be loading it into. So we'll add a Telerik information layer, call it xinfo. And information layer, since we're loading file in from our reader, we saw in the KML data that we can just load this shape reader in the code and do all that fun stuff. But since we're going to be wanting to do a little bit more in the XAML here, we're going to go ahead and add our shape reader to the XAML directly. So we can say Telerik information layer dot reader will be a Telerip map shape reader. And we of course we want to give this a name, X shape reader. And now we have our rad map information layer, and the information layer contains a shape reader. Now the shape reader of course is going to have to load some data. So we'll step into code behind. And in the loaded event, we want to go ahead and load some of these files. We want to go ahead and load these files that we have in our data sources folder into our shape reader. So the quick and easy way to do that is going to be x shape reader dot source first is new URI and we'll say data sources slash New Jersey first the SHP file and this of course going to be URI kind dot relative. Now we can quickly copy this and instead of source we're going to say data source and this will be that DBF file, so DBF. So we have both the shapes as well as the supporting data. Do a really quick save on this, go ahead and run our project, and we'll see what it looks like. And now RadMap is all loaded, and if you do have your spectacles on, you'll see that we did have something really small loading in here. So we're gonna do a little trick to show you how to get a better grip on where this data is, but we have a very nice representation of New Jersey. So this is pretty handy, looking pretty cool, but we can do better. The one thing I want to highlight, if you notice, my mouse pointer is kind of over the center of New Jersey. And if you look in the lower left corner, you'll see latitude and longitude. We have 40 degrees, blah, 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 74 degrees, blah, blah, blah. That's going to give us a pretty good idea of around where we need to be as far as coordinates and location for centering our rad map. But conveniently, I already have some handy values saved. So we can copy and paste those into our rad map instance. It'll make it a little bit easier to define a, little, a nicer location for where we start off. So we step back into our XAML wait for it to catch up, and RADMAP, we're going to set a few things. First, our default zoom level is going to be 7. That's also the minimum zoom level. Our max zoom level is 9, so we have a limited range of zooming in and out. And our center is going to be, if you remember I said, that 40 and 74 location. So we see represented here, 40 point a bunch of numbers, and negative 74 point a bunch of numbers. This will get us a lot closer to where New Jersey actually is, as well as the zoom level that makes New Jersey kind of stand out. So we have that all covered. If I load this back up one more time, you're going to see that we now have a lot better starting point for our map. So now it would make sense to add a little bit more features and functionality to what we're doing here. See, New Jersey. And of course we can zoom in. That's my mouse wheel going crazy. And we can zoom out. But we can only go to those certain predefined levels. So now of course you're probably saying, it would be really helpful if I had some way to know what data is sitting here in my application so I'd have some idea of how to use it. Well, very conveniently, you do have this option. I'm going to go ahead, go into my data sources folder, and now we can see we have the New Jersey SHP and DBF files. If I open this SHP, 
It's not going to be for the faint of heart. Quick, quick open. We do not want to use the web to find a viewer. We'll say we want to open this notepad. And we open this up. This is a mess of data. You really don't want to go digging into these shape files because they are a heap of data that you are going to be very afraid of. But if we look at this DBF file, we're going to see something slightly different. And we want to select our program. We want to use Notepad. No, use it always by default. And now we can actually see there's something readable here. If I go and shrink this way down, we're going to be able to see, let's see if, I, if I get it quite right, that we have a number of different values here, like area, perimeter, state, county, name. Now these are all going to be descriptive fields that are sitting behind our data that we can utilize since we have that data file. Now there's going to be another video that goes into a little bit more digging into this and showing more advanced data. But here we want to do a really quick display where we take the value for the name as well as add some colorization for both fill and highlight. So we know we have a name value. So we'll go ahead and keep that in mind. And we get back into our XAML. And the shape reader is going to have tooltip format. And here we'll say name. Quick clean up on our code. And this means that when we go into our application, once again, we'll wait for it to load and load our shape file into place. If you remember, we had this DBF file. It says name is going to have some value. And when we start scrolling into our map, oh, went slightly off screen. Once we step over, we see our tooltip displaying a name for the different counties. So we are one step closer to where we're going on our map. The last thing we need to do is add both the fill colors that we want as well as the highlight color that we want. This is actually really easy since we're writing in the information layer. We'll say Telerik information layer. And we first want to add a shape fill, which is going to be Telerik map shape fill. Our fill will be a nice color like light blue. And we'll add a stroke, dark gray. And our stroke thickness is going to be 2. Now we also want to add a Telerik information layer dot highlight fill. This is going to be very similar. Telerik map shape fill. So it'll be a nice bright orange. Stroke once again be dark gray. And stroke thickness will once again be 2. So now with this little bit of XAML set, we have a shape fill and a shape highlight color. We've also set the format that we want for the name to be displayed as a tooltip. So now we can see again, New Jersey displayed in a lovely light blue. And as we go and highlight over the different elements, we can see Monmouth, Ocean, Middlesex, Somerset, Mercer, all these are being highlighted in that blue that we defined, as well as have that tooltip, which is set to the name, which is in effect the county name. I hope you've seen how quickly and easily you can add ESRI shapefile support to your RAB app instance. Stay tuned for the next video in the series, which will take you a little bit deeper into shapefile support and how you can actually work with that data to do something a little bit more advanced with your data visualizations. Stay tuned for more.